what are we releasing to our nation? Are we releasing a nation of battered, hopeless, and fearful people? Or are we releasing a nation, a people that is excited, raring to go, full of purpose and full of God? That was Bishop Chire addressing our pastors and executive teams in one of our strategic Philippine apostolic meetings. In today's episode, we will discuss why leading with faith is essential for every person that God has called to lead. Friends, let us lead our people to faith, to hope, and to the love of God. Welcome to the Leading Together podcast, where we take an inside look at how we develop a leadership culture at Victory and Every Nation Philippines. We believe that leadership is best done together, and that's why we do this podcast. We hope this helps you lead better together. I'm Ryan. I'm part of our creative team in Victory and Every Nation Philippines. And I'm El, a campus missionary from Every Nation Campus. We're glad to have you listen to this episode of Leading Together about leading with great faith. We all know that the pandemic has brought a lot of fear into our world. This sense of fear has been prolonged and heightened, so it led to complications in a lot of people's minds, decisions, and actions. According to an article from The Guardian, cases of anxiety and depression around the world increased dramatically in 2020. Researchers have found that around 76 million cases of anxiety and 53 million cases of major depressive disorder worldwide would not have happened if the COVID-19 pandemic did not happen. When a crisis hits, one of our natural responses as humans is to fear. Although it seems impossible to break away from fear in a dark situation, the Holy Spirit offers us an alternative to respond and lead in faith. In this episode, Bishop Jure from our Bishop's Council gives wise and encouraging words and challenges us to respond to this crisis with great faith. Here's his message. Let me just uh, uh, share this with us. Uh, Let me read from Hebrews chapter 11, uh, starting with verse 5. Uh, Obviously, faith yung topic, so I think it's no surprise we're going to Hebrews 11. Uh, But anyway, by faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death And he was not found because God had taken him. Now before he was taken, he he was commended as having pleased God. And verse 6, And without faith, it is impossible to please God. For whoever draws near to God must believe he exists and he rewards those who seek him. One of the questions I ask myself, uh, one of the questions uh, I remind myself to keep asking and, in a sense, evaluating and challenge every leader is the question is, are we waiting for things to improve, to change, to go back to some kind of normal? Or are we leading? Are we leading ourselves? Are we leading people? To our leaders here, uh, we, uh, the question is, where are we headed? Are we leading those who, where are we leading those who are following us? When you look around us, obviously fear has gripped our world for a year and a half, uh, more than a year and a half now. Uh, sadly, fear has become the chosen tool today. It has controlled our physical behavior, but it has also put our mental and emotional condi- conditions out of control. It has protected us and put some control on an unseen enemy. But it has also unleashed others which our world has chosen to ignore. Fear may provide something or some benefit, but it will rob us of everything else. Now, I say this, uh, uh, we're not experts. We don't know the science of this pandemic. We don't know the possible government solutions to this. But we are leaders. We can lead. And the challenge is we must lead. We must lead in faith. We must lead through faith, and we must lead towards faith. When we read Hebrews 11, we see this phrase. I'm sure you've heard me mention this quite a few times. The phrase, by faith, repeated time and time again. The word by, or the phrase by faith, means in consequence of, or as a result, or through the agency or authority of. This can really be exciting. Uh, we see, uh, we, we, we get challenged. We see that our, the impossible can be made possible through faith. We can see that we can jump into the miraculous even 
in, uh, uh, in difficult situations. We see the possibilities that there no longer has to be dead ends that we, that in life. But we also realize uh, sometimes we get discouraged because when we read our heroes, we kind of have this feeling, I can't be like that. Or I'm not like that. But I also need, I realize we need to ask the question, what can we do? What do we do? Where is faith taking us? Where does faith want to lead us? And as we go on this morning, let me just uh, share with you uh, uh, some things or let us look at a few things. And, I, and I'm sure uh, you have come up to this conclusion uh, sometime in your life. Uh, but let, let it be a reminder for us again. And the first thing is this. Faith is really about God. It's not really about us. Faith is really about God. Verse 6, it says, Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who seek Him. Faith is actually drawing near to God. One of the highlights of Hebrews is really Hebrews 11. Why do I say that? The author of Hebrews uh, uh, talks about our amazing God. In the beginning, you'll, in the uh, uh, beginning chapters, you'll see this, that he actually talks specifically about our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. He writes and he mentions these things. God has spoken to our ancestors in many ways in the past, but today he speaks to us by his Son. He says the sun is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful hand. It's almost like a picture of the sun. And, and, and uh, when you look at the sun, the radiance is, he's talking about the, the radiance or the rays of the sun as the son of God. That is, it's, it's amazing who this savior is. Uh, he, he declares that Jesus is more superior than the Torah or the law of God. Uh, in a sense, he's declaring that Jesus, the difference with Jesus is Jesus is the word of God. Jesus is not just, uh, uh, we're not just reading about the word of God. Jesus is the word of God. It, he explains that Jesus is greater than Moses. His promises goes far beyond the promise of a promised land. And how the Jews were so captured with the with a with the concept that God has given them a promised land, and and the author of Hebrews is telling him that hey, God has something greater than the promised land. In a sense, he's saying Jesus is their sure hope. Then he talks about Jesus as the ultimate ultimate priest and king. He takes us into the presence of God forever. In a sense, Jesus is the ultimate sovereign and intercessor. Then he talks about Jesus is the complete sacrifice. He died once for all. Jesus is the total victory over sin. So the great, when you realize, when I was thinking about this, I realized this, oh, I'm reminded of this, that the great in great faith is not us acting in greatness. The great in great faith is really our great God. Our great God who did everything, who promised everything, and who is working out everything. I realize that when you read all these great things our heroes of faith walk into or accomplish, really came from the heart of God, really is the, was the will of God, really is the things that God was doing in their lives. It is God who has an unchangeable, unstoppable purpose and plan for your life. And for our lives. That purpose is being worked out no matter what our situation is now. Uh, we are not trying to lead people back to normal or even a better normal. We are leading them to, uh, and leading ourselves to God that, he may that we may discover and live out the purposes of God. Friends, COVID-19 cannot stop what God is working out for you and for our nation. COVID-19 is simply the stage today where God is working out his plans, his promises, and his purpose for you and for our world. One of the things we discover in Hebrews is the fact that nothing, no one can ever be a hindrance to God's plan 
promises and purpose. He is the ultimate sovereign. Secondly, faith is a heart disposition that leads us to action. Verse 6, and without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. The conclusion after talking about our amazing Savior, when you read Hebrews, the encouragement, the way to connect with our amazing Savior, the, the way to connect with this amazing God, Hebrews is telling us, the author of Hebrews is telling us, the way to connect it to his promises and his plans is really by faith. Faith is our response to God, not necessarily the power behind our actions. Simply put, faith is trust God. So the question is, will you trust God? Genesis chapter 15, verse 6. Abraham was in a place of hopelessness. Abraham was in a place of doubt. He was asking God, who will inherit my estate? He was, at, he was in doubt whether God was going to fulfill his promise. And God says, uh, Genesis chapter 15, verse 6 says, this, Abraham believed God and he credited to him as righteousness. In Abraham's struggle, God does not rebuke him. Instead, God gives him more of his word. And Abraham's reaction, the Bible says, he believed and it was credited to him as righteousness. Righteousness, right standing, right relationship with God. The question is, did Abraham do anything? The answer is obvious. No, Abraham did nothing. It was God who did everything. And somebody put it this way that made me think and is still making me think. Abraham's greatest life-changing miracle happened when he did nothing. Let me repeat that again. Abraham's greatest Life-changing miracle happened when he did nothing. You must believe in him. And you must believe, as the scripture says, he is a rewarder. The word rewarder means one who pays wages with his own values. Pro properly paying what is due. The real, it's a real part of faith. A real part of faith is to believe God is a rewarder. There is an expectation that God gives and God provides and rewards as we trust. When we obey God, when we follow his word, we can, we can expect, we must expect that he fulfills his promise. That is not evil. That is not a selfish heart. That is faith in God. One of the reasons our heroes of faith could trust and make seemingly crazy and dangerous decisions was because they believed God will reward according to his promise and according to his word. So the truth and the questions are, God is faithful and he is true to his word. Which brings us to the question is, will we trust? And will we expect God to do so or be so? We are not being challenged to find the solution or solutions. We are simply being asked, will you trust God? I guess I've realized that that's the constant question that faces us every day of our lives. Will we trust God again today? If we failed yesterday, Will we change that failure to trust God again? When you read scripture, that's the constant question. That's the, that was the question in the garden. Will you trust God? That was the question with, with the Tower of Babel. That was the question with Noah. That's the question with Abraham. That's the question with Moses. That's the question all throughout. And, when, and after the resurrection of Jesus, Till his return, the question is the same. Will we trust God? 
Let me encourage us. Let us lead people to the word of God and to faith in God and his word. Some questions to think about. Is faith rising up in us or is fear gripping our hearts more and more? Has this past year and a half been more, been more of, of the word in us or more fear with us? Has this past year and a half been survival mode or getting ready mode? Lastly, faith in God leads to faithfulness. Faithfulness leads to great faith. Verse 5 again, by faith Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death. And he was not found because God had taken him. Now before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. I used to believe that Hebrews 11.1 1 was the definition, was the only definition of faith. But the more I read now and the more I see the whole of Hebrews, I realize that Hebrews 11 is the definition and description of faith. It's really the whole of Hebrews 11. I was always impressed with Abraham, with Sarah, with Moses, with Noah, Isaac, Joseph, and not very much by Enoch, except the way God took him. That, I was, that caught my attention, or that still catches my attention. But I, when I, the more I read, I realize Enoch is actually a highlight or the highlight of Hebrews 11. I think Enoch was one of the best examples of faith in Hebrews 11. See, you see, we see in Hebrews 11, I mentioned it, the, the, the constant phrase, by faith, by faith, multiple times. But with Enoch, it's only the place where we find the phrase without faith. It's the only place in the Hebrews 11 where it's mentioned without faith. So in a sense, my question is, what is being said through Enoch? Not that he is the only one who did this, but this is the highlight. This is the emphasis. In a sense, this is the exaggeration of his life. He, this, is a, this is what made him different from everybody else. Not that he's the only one who did it, but this is the difference God wanted to get across to all of us, I believe. Genesis chapter 5, verse 21. When Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. After he became the father of Methuselah, Enoch walked faithfully with God 300 years, and he had other sons, daughters. Altogether, Enoch lived a total of 365 years. Enoch walked faithfully with God 300 years. This is what he is being commended for. This is what pleased God. The word of God shows us that Enoch was a man of God, a preacher and a prophet, but none of this highlighted as pleasing God. The highlight of Enoch's life was not what he did, in a sense, or what he accomplished. The highlight, the pleasure of God with Enoch was he fa walked faithfully with him. With him. Hebrews 11 talks about faith in the amazing God we have. That's our connection with our amazing Savior. That's our connection with the promises of God. That's our connection with the Word of God. Then Hebrews 11 tells us that it's by faith that, that, that we connect. Then the rest of Hebrews pleads with us, encourages us, warns us to be faithful to God. So in a real sense, Great faith is seen in, a, in faithfulness to God for a lifetime. Great faith is not seen in one act. Great faith is seen in a lifetime of walking faithfully with God. As I close, I want us to imagine this scenario with me. Uh, what do you think can happen? Let's say one year from now, this pandemic is over. The question in my mind is this, what are we releasing to our nation? Are we releasing a nation of battered, hopeless, and fearful people? Or are we releasing a nation, a people that is excited, raring to go, full of purpose and full of God and full of faith in God?
Friends, let us lead our people to faith, to hope, and to the love of God. Our biggest, best COVID breakthrough will not be seen tomorrow or even in the next year. It will be seen as we like, as we, like Enoch, walk faithfully with God for the rest of our days. We may see a glimpse of it in our lifetime, but I'm confident and I'm in faith that our children and our children's children will live in the promises of God. Let us lead people to faith in God. Let us lead people in faith and let us lead people to faith. God bless you as we continue to serve God and walk with him faithfully for the rest of our lives. Bishop Jure gave a lot of thought-provoking questions about the way we are leading our lives and others now. Fear might be the way of the world, but we're called to respond differently as people of God. We are people of faith. It's encouraging to know that faith is not about how good we are or how much we know about the Bible. The power of our faith is not in faith itself, but the object of our faith, which is Jesus. As you continue to meditate on the message, here are some discussion questions that can help you reflect. 1. What are you most fearful about now? 2. Is there an area in your life where you feel like you are lacking faith? And 3. Who can help you face your fears and lead with faith? As we continue to brave this challenging point in history, know that you are not alone. God is with you. And our church community is here with you. Let us lead in faith. Let us lead through faith. And let us lead towards faith. Thanks for listening. If you would like to continue to talk about this, you can discuss this with your Victory Group leader. If you're not part of a Victory Group yet, you can visit victory.org.ph to find a church near you and get connected. If this has been helpful for you, or if you think of someone who can be encouraged by this podcast, you can share this with them and discuss it together. See you in the next episode of Leading Together.